everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I am the author of this book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And today I want to walk you through what's going on on one of my absolute favorite blues pieces, which is by Oscar Peterson. It's called Kelly's Blues. It's one of the first jazz pieces I ever learned, and I just think it's brilliant. So I'm going to start by playing it for you. I'm no Oscar Peterson, um, but I'll play it for you, and then I'll walk you through what I think makes it so special. So here we go. Kelly's Blues. <laughs> transcription of uh, this piece and um, I don't guarantee a hundred percent accuracy and he plays it a little bit differently every time but this will give us something to talk about an idea about what's going on so um, first thing to notice is the intense triplet subdivision right right from the very very beginning this is almost in 12 days so if you're gonna play this piece it's really important and um, there's so many triplets that you really have to, right from the beginning, feel those triplets. Okay, so I got some wires in the piano here. The second thing to notice is that there's very few melody notes that don't have some kind of inflection on them. And right from the beginning, we have, we have this grace note. And this is so typical of the blues to have tons of grace notes. And I'm always explaining that in the blues on piano, grace notes simulate pitch bends. So, so uh, we're always putting in extra grace notes to give a little bit more expression, a little bit more of a vocal quality to what we're doing. Um, and, you know, I don't know if he plays it exactly this way, but even in this first chord, right after the double bar line, he goes A, D, F. I'm going to change this camera angle just a little bit. Um, I often put in a little C sharp to D slide. And you can see on that third chord, I put an A sharp to D slot. But you can see that there's so many little turns, so many chords or double notes added everywhere here. And this is such a big part of Oscar Peterson's blues style. I think it's just a big part of blues style on the piano. Um, and some of it's just kind of hard to notate, so it might not even be on here. Now, this first full measure after the double bar really fascinates me, and I want to explain each hand separately. So, um, we need to talk about these blues gospel voicings, which I think are really useful. Um, if you've ever played Lean On Me, you've probably heard... Uh, um, it's these voicings that are second inversion triads. And the way that we're going to kind of figure these out is we're going to start with a mixolydian scale. So since this is a blues in G, you can see the first chord is G7. We're going to start with G mixolydian. Okay. And then we're going to use second inversion triads. That is triads with the fifth on bottom. So like a G triad would be D, G, D. I'll let you see, see this a little bit bigger. And then we're going to go up this mixolydian scale. Fortunately, in G, the mixolydian scale is all the white keys, so it couldn't be easier. To make them sound even more in character, what are we going to add? We're going to add these grace notes. So instead of just, I'm going to go. And we can add grace notes all over. Probably the most typical is adding kind of the sharp two into the three. That could be on the top of the chord, or it could be in the middle of the chord like that. But we can also, we could add a grace note into the sixth, into the fifth. I don't really like that one that I just did. Don't do that. So it could be in the middle or on top of the chord. So that's what Oscar Peterson is doing. He's got the simple melodies, just but he's adding. So that's cool. But then you combine it with the left hand and it gets really cool because the left hand, so it's just a G7, but what he does is a quick one, five, one, like D, G, uh, G, D, G, I think I said that backwards. 
Um, or you can think of it as a one and then the tritone sub of one, which would be A flat seven back to G seven. So that's a pretty normal thing to do to just add a spice of a five chord in there, right? E, D, G. But look what happens. In this, you would never play this chord in isolation. You have G, C, E, and then F sharp or G flat in the left hand. So it's creating this tension, but both hands have a natural resolution. So even though it's this moment of tension, um, it actually works. Pretty nice. And I think he, he plays a D with this B here. Um, and I love in bar two. I think of this as almost a smear, because you don't want to necessarily hear every individual note. You just want to have that feeling of kind of cascading downwards. It's hard to know what to do with this rhythmically. I called it a five tuplet because it's five notes that are roughly equal. Um, and it's pretty cool to think about having five uh, equal notes in a, in a beat. Uh, it's kind of not what we usually do um, in jazz or really most any kind of Western music. And I love it. he puts this little punch on the end of three. He does this a few times in the speed. Line. And then again here, to me. Um, so again, things kind of come into conflict. He's repeating the melody from beat one, now with a B flat in the middle of the voicing. But notice, again, you wouldn't play this chord in isolation. But because of the context, Basically, this, the, whatever melody you play for the first four measures, you repeat in the second four measures, right? It's kind of this whole thing of like, ooh, my baby left me, she left me yesterday. And then you repeat that, right? Ooh, my baby left me, she left me yesterday. And then you do something contrasting for the last four. My baby just went and up, up and went away, whatever, <laughs> right? This is very typical of the blues. So Oscar Peterson uses this to put this F over the C7 chord, which kind of doesn't exactly fit. Notice what he does again in the left hand, is he does one, five, a one. The five of C is G7. So you see the third and the seventh in the left hand of the G7. And by the way, notice it's another and of three. One, two, three. I don't have the proper rests in here. <laughs> because I did a very fast transcription, uh, but now you see it. Look at that little accent on the end of one. This is the kind of care that he puts into his music. It's not just that he's going to play. He's going to play another end of three hit with this C sharp diminished. I just love this um, because he puts so much care into the harmony. So the basic chords here would be G7 for a measure and then E7 for a measure. That's the five of two. Um, but look at what Oscar Peterson does. He does kind of like, we could say it's G7 over D or maybe it's D minor. And then he walks down. What chord is this? It's a little hard to say. D. 
instead of B7, he does the tritone of B7. He does an F7. That leads him to finally an E7. Whoa, sorry about that. Come on. Technical difficulties, getting excited. It leads him to that, that E7 here. So it takes him so long to get down to that E7. Um, and then again, he's got relatively simple chords if we're thinking about the blues form. You got an A minor 7 to a D7. But he fills it in with a waka, which is this typical bass line of a whole step, half step, half step, half step. Whole, half, half, half. If you don't know the waka, this is so typical of bluesy gospel music bass lines. And notice again how context allows dissonances to work. Here we have a C sharp in the bass against a D melody. In isolation, sounds awful. This was something that I just learned upon re-listening. Whoa. <laughs> nope. None of that works. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm now circling in green, it's a D7, but he uses a G major triad. G, D, D. Um, so we got this walk up, dissonance, and then kind of a four chord. Gospel, right? Gospel does one that plagal progression so much. Um, and I, I love in this next line, this next line is just so sweet. Uh, we have kind of this repeat of these half steps. And then we also have a compound melody. Um, if you've been watching my videos a while, you know this term compound melody. The basic idea is that you have a single line melody, but it's got hidden melodies in it. So this has, kind of sounds like the Pink Panther, right? Um, so you have this half step chromatic ascent. And then again, instead of just simply going from G to D at the end here, he does another walk up. We're going to look at each of the chord symbols. It'd be G7 over B, C major, and then this is like E flat over C sharp. We could think of it as a C sharp diminished if we want to D7. We see this kind of thing like in rhythm changes too. You can see it's two chromatic lines, one going down, one going up. thing um, that he sometimes does kind of as an alternate version. Um, my iPad's getting uncooperative. Uh, but sometimes over here, he chooses, instead of kind of sticking with these mixolydian voicings, he'll flat the E flat and the A flat and do an A flat triad. So it's kind of like a flat two sound. tune to provide just a different spark of color. So you can see that the, within this kind of simple sounding blues tune, there's so much richness and he creates a lot of interesting dissonance through um, kind of different systems in his right hand and his left hand. Maybe his right hand's doing something gospel-y, whereas his right hand's, or whereas his left hand's doing something super tonal. So let me play this one more time and then I'd encourage you to go and listen to Oscar's version on your own. So here's one more version of Kelly's Blues. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, buy my book from jeremysiskin.com. I'd be thrilled to send you a copy. It goes like this.